right, well, this morning we're continuing our series in Romans, and if you're just joining us for the first time, it's okay. You can go back and catch up, but today you'll also be able to just slide right in with us because we're in Romans chapter 3. And if you haven't had the chance to meet, if you're newer to Highmark, my name is Don, and that was my wife Jamie with us uh, up on stage a minute ago. But uh, we're so blessed and thankful that you're with us today. And I want to just take a minute, as I always do, to just welcome everyone that's joining us online, wherever you're at. Thank you for being a part of the church. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning, and I believe that God has something for your life and everyone in this room. I believe God's going to speak something to us today, but church, would you just join me and let's welcome everyone that is online with us. We're so blessed and honored that you're with us and believe God's got something good for you. You know, uh, Highmark's mission has been clear since it's, uh, we started this church in 2019. God has called us to be a church that is all about helping people find and follow Jesus. Those are really two strategic things that we have felt that God has called us to, that he wants us to make a difference in our world with, that he wants us to help people find and follow Jesus. And I love that. I love that because I think those words, find and follow, we, we, when we were praying about starting Highmark Church, we really felt like that really spoke to the mission that God has called every one of us to be a part of, that we're called to uh, tell other people and help them find Jesus, but we're also all called to be part of a church, to be part of a community where we can grow and learn to follow Jesus together. And so that's from day one has always been our mission, and our vision has been to help every person know God live free, pursue their purpose, and make a difference. It's a journey that God has for every one of us. And as we stepped into this year, I, I was praying that before we stepped into 2020, like, God, what do you have for Highmark Church? What is it that you want to do? And I really felt like God gave us this word, and I shared it at the beginning of the year uh, as we kicked off a series about the vision for, for the church. Uh, in the word was was really simple. It was expand, and I and I didn't know and fully understand really kind of what God wanted to speak to us or do in our church this year. But I really just felt this word expand was was part of our focus and uh, spoke to what God wants to do in our church this year. So I believe like God is wanting a He wanted us to expand our influence, expand our impact expand our reach to our community and our neighbors. And so this year, we're just really kind of following God and praying for opportunities and moments where we can step into all that God has for us. And so uh, I, would you just pray that with me this year? We are like, we're kind of like halfway through the year. We're getting close to that halfway through the year point. But would you just join me and say, God, what, what ways do you want us to expand? What ways do you want us to move in our life? Uh, and, and maybe God has something in ways that he wants to expand and grow you personally. Uh, and so we're praying that over your life. And I would just love uh, to celebrate what God is doing. Uh, last week, we had a few people that raised their hand to make a decision to follow Jesus. And I want to just, I want to report and kind of give you a little update that just since the beginning of the year, we've had over 40 people raised their hand and make a decision to follow Jesus in one of our services. And praise God, that is amazing and the best decision that they could ever make. And so, man, we love that and we love that what God is doing and we're helping people find and follow Jesus. Today, uh, we're going to go into this uh, chapter three of the book of Romans, because we're kind of digging in and going through the book a little bit. I, I shared a message last week and I said, hey, this is like, this series is a little bit of like mashed potato, meat, like meat and potatoes, like mashed potatoes. Like it's going to stick to your ribs. It's going to stick with you. And so this morning we're going to continue talking really about God's plan. And the book of Romans is just rich with theology. It's rich with doctrine. And those things are so important to your everyday life. They're so important to helping you make decisions and be guided by godly principles and, and uh, make, this, you know, make decisions and navigate the challenges of life. 
So if you have your Bibles, you can turn open to Romans chapter 3. I don't, if it's paper, open it up. If it's digital, open it up. If you, if you want to follow along with my notes too, you can scan the QR code in the seat back. And uh, that will have all my notes in there. If you just click the link for sermon notes, everything you need about today's service is in our worship guide this morning. I want to share this story. Uh, years ago when my kids were little, uh, I realized you have moments where your kids are, you realize your kids are a lot like you. And I remember a moment when our daughter was like four or five and I had taught her just to ride her bike that day and we came home because we had gone somewhere like to a big parking lot where she could really get used to riding and, and she picked it up and, and started riding and, and just zipping all across this parking lot. But we came home at the end of the day after kind of spending the day learning and practicing and afterwards we grabbed lunch together and, and uh, I, I just remember coming home and Lexi, our daughter, who is, uh, has an older brother who's four years older than her, thought that on her first day riding a bike that she was ready now to compete. Like she was ready to race anybody. And I loved that. I was like, this is my daughter because she's like competitive. Like I can make a competition basically out of everything, okay? And I remember that moment because she was challenging her brother to ride the bike. They lined up at the line and, and said go. And, uh, and her brother, who was nine at the time, clearly beat her to the end of the driveway by a, a huge amount. And Lexi in that moment broke down crying. And Andrew, like, kind of felt bad. And I was like, it's all right, buddy. Like, you're older. And we had explained to Lexi, it's okay. Uh, it's okay that you, you, you lost. And from that moment on, Andrew realized that, like, his sister was just, like, another level of competitive. And that if he wanted to be a good brother, that he might need to give her a head start next time. He might need to give her a little bit of an advantage. Has anybody ever had a little bit of an advantage or a head start at some point in your life that you just loved and you appreciated? Come on, let me see your hands. I know you're out there. You've probably had a little bit of a head start, or maybe if you didn't, you realized afterwards you needed one. You needed a head start from someone, but a head start is really some type of an advantage that it's given when there is a difference in abilities or capabilities. And so I, I just want to uh, encourage you that, and today I want to just speak something to you, is that God has actually given you an, an advantage. He's given you that type of head start in life. Now, in the, the, the race of life, in the journey of life, there's a lot of things that we can feel that are in opposition to us, that are challenges to us. But I believe that when we are following Jesus, when we're living a life of faith, when we're allowing God to speak to us, and we're allowing him to guide us every step of the way, you know what happens? God actually gives us an advantage. He gives us this head start. And today I'm going to look at a scripture in Romans chapter 3, just the first few verses, because it talks to really this head start advantage that God gives to us. Now, I think the problem, and we talked about this a couple weeks ago, is that sometimes we're too prideful in the fact that we uh, hang on to uh, our position and we hang on to where we're at and we don't grab hold of the head start and the advantage that God has given to us. And so I want, I want, you, to, I want you to understand that while God has given you a head start, the reality is a lot of times we don't grab hold of it, we don't live in it, we don't uh, pursue it, and instead we just kind of get stuck and we, we kind of, uh, uh, maybe our pride holds us back from really living in it and, and understanding that the, the advantage God wants us to live in. But God wants us to, to instead of just kind of sitting back or neglecting his grace, he wants us to grab hold of it. He wants us to live in this advantage. And I don't know about you, but man, there's a lot of days where I'm like, I need an advantage. I'm, I'm looking for the way up, the leg up. Like, how can I uh, just live in God's blessings? How can God help me uh, navigate with wisdom challenges I'm facing or difficult days? Or how can I uh, be an encouragement to somebody else? I need God to work through me. I need God to be with me. And so as we look at Romans chapter 3, 
I want to give you a little context of what the Apostle Paul is talking about. Because in the past, uh, in chapter 2 and now into chapter 3, he's addressing this uh, two different groups of people. He's talking about the Jews and he's also talking about the Gentiles. And now the Jews and the Gentiles were really two different uh, groups of people with different backgrounds, but he is addressing them because they're all followers of Jesus. Now, he's not talking about Jews that deny Jesus. He's talking about Jews that are following Jesus, but their heritage is the people of Israel. They are the Jewish people. Uh, and so there's a distinction there I want you to get. He's talking about Jews that believe in Jesus, and now the Gentiles were non-Jewish people. And historically, God did not have a promise for them. But in the New Testament, through Jesus Christ, opens up a whole new world of grace, a whole new people group that he's working in, all of the Gentile people. And you know what? That's a blessing. That's an amen from us today because we are the Gentile people and God is still working in our midst. And, and we may not have uh, heritage uh, like the Jewish people, uh, people of Israel, but we are the Gentiles and God has spread his grace to all people, to everyone has access to God's grace. Is anybody with me this morning and thankful for that? I am, and I want to live in that, and I want to challenge you and encourage you to live in that grace. So Paul is talking about these two groups of people because there's, there's a little bit of an argument, just like a little bit of a competition between the two of them. I'm like, who's right and who's wrong? Like, who's better or who's worse? And Paul is kind of addressing to the church in Rome the fact that, listen, God has created a level playing field and there isn't any advantage uh, to one group or the other, but there's an advantage to everyone. But in the first few verses of Romans chapter 3, he actually is talking about the Jewish people. And this is what he says, and this is our main text this morning that I want us to dig into. He says, then what's the advantage of being a Jew? Is there any value in the ceremony of circus, circumcision, which is a religious ceremony that God instructed from the Old Testament that to do? He said, yes, there are great benefits. First of all, the Jews were entrusted with the whole revelation of God. True, some of them were unfaithful, but just because they were unfaithful, does that mean that God will be unfaithful? Then he says, of course not. Even if everyone else is a liar, God is true. As the scripture says about him, you will be proved right in what you say, and you will win your case in court. He's quoting right here from the book of Psalms that speaks to the trueness of God, the character of God. And he's talking here about the advantage that the Jews have because God had given them and worked historically in their midst. And even though that God had worked in their midst, that they had been unfaithful and they had kind of turned their back on God. And if you read the Old Testament, you can see countless times that the Israelites, the Jewish people, they turned from God's plan. They got distracted. They worshiped other gods. They got scared. They got fearful. The economy went bad. You know, the famine like plagued the land, all of these things. And, and despite all of that, he's saying they had an advantage that God gave them the whole revelation of his love, the whole revelation of his plan, and he was faithful to, to them every step of the way. And I love that in that, in verse four there, he really says, like, because they were unfaithful, does that mean that God was unfaithful to him? And he says, of course not, exclamation point. It's so emphatic. It's one of the strongest words in the Greek language right there that Paul is saying, like, there is no way it's not possible because God is faithful. And this word proved it, proved it over and over again. And he has proved himself to be true and faithful through every circumstance, through every situation. So Paul is declaring God's faithfulness. But he's also saying, listen, we all, not just the Jewish people, we live in this advantage in life because of God's grace, because of his plans. And so this morning, I want to give you just a couple things that I see from the scripture 
that are the advantages that we need to start living in on a daily basis. That we need to allow God to transform our thinking and our mindset and ha- allow him to help us understand what it means to live with the advantage of his grace and his peace and his love every single day in his life. You know what? God doesn't want you waking up every single day and you just feeling like, Today, it all depends on me. Today, I got to make something happen. Today, I got I to, gotta, you know, take care of this. And I got to do this. And I got responsibilities with my family. And I got things with, with loved ones. And I got challenges on work. And God doesn't want you to feel the burden of life. But he, he wants you to feel the advantage of walking in his spirit. And the advantage of walking in an anointing in your life. And you may not have ever really heard it that way, but God has, wants you to know that he has anointed you. He's called you just like he did the Israelites. His, his love and anointing has spread to you, to all people, that you can operate on a daily basis in this anointing from God. What does that mean? That just means you're operating in a saturation of God's presence, that you can wake up your, in your day and you can say, today, God, I give it all to you. Today, God, I submit it all to you. God, order my steps. God, here are the burdens. Here are the anxieties. Here are the worries. Here are the challenges. All of these things that I have a tendency to grip and try to control, but instead, God, I'm giving them to you. I'm trusting you. And today, I'm declaring, I'm gonna walk in your spirit and your anointing in my life. And I'm gonna declare it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna live in that advantage of my life. Let me tell you, God wants you to live in that place. Are you with me this morning? Do you understand that God has that type of calling for your life? But often, we shrug it off. Often we say, oh, I'm not worthy, or we forget about it, or we, we, we tend to set it aside, and our pride gets the best of us. And we say, no, I gotta make this happen. But God wants us to live in in this advantage of his anointing in our life. He wants us to live in the advantages that he's given us. So what are some of the advantages that he's given us? The first is this, is that God's word is an advantage for us. God's word, it helps us to know God. That's part of our vision. And we believe every person is on this journey to know God. And so uh, God's word is one of the greatest ways that we can get to know his heart and his character and his love and how much his grace has filled us. And, and, and his word helps us know his principles and his promises. And so our, uh, his word is this advantage that's been given to us. It's something that we can live by. It actually gives us a standard to live by. In the world that we've talked about this in the past few weeks, in a world that's shifting and cultures are all over the place and, and standards are changing day in and day out, the word of God gives us this baseline and gives us this true plumb line in our life that we can live by. And it becomes an advantage that we can glean not just the wisdom of this world or our friends and relationships, but we can glean the wisdom of God and we can apply it to our life. It's an advantage for us. Look at what he says in verse 2. Yes, there's great benefits. There are great benefits. First of all, the Jews were entrusted with the whole revelation of God. And you know what that is? That is the word of God. We've been given this full revelation of God through his word. That there is so much in these pages that we can learn from and grow from and wisdom and principles that we can extract to apply to our life. We just have to be intentional to absorb it and take it in. We got to be intentional to ask God to help us to apply it to our life. And you know what? He's entrusted it to all of us. He's already given it to us. He's given us this advantage. We just have to apply it to our life. Now, I don't know when you're growing up, if your parents' car had one of these, but you have to be maybe a little bit older. So if you're a little younger and you don't know what I'm talking about, just hang with me. We'll get to your life in just a minute. But growing up, in the back seat of the driver's seat of my dad's car, there was one of these, a road atlas. Anybody kind of ever see one of these? This was like a big road atlas that my dad had in the back seat. 
and it, you opened it up and like every state was in there and it was like an overview of every highway system. You could see like where everything was going. And when you needed to go on a trip, you would pull out the road atlas and you would find the path for your journey. Like you would, you would maybe even highlight, you're gonna like, we're gonna take this interstate till we get to this city and then we're gonna find this interstate and we're gonna go here. And then you'd get in the midst of it and you'd be like, you know, you, you know, mom and dad are in the front seat. You're like, get the rattles out. I don't know which way we we're supposed to go. You know, like in a panic, in a moment, you're flipping open this big map and trying to figure out which way to go. But the, the atlas wasn't something that you used day in and day out. In our house, it was like, or in our car, it was like typically just something you use like when you're going on trips or you're going into unfamiliar territory, you're going into, you know, like a somewhere where you needed to know like, okay, I, this is beyond the scope of what I know and I need to kind of reference something. It was a reference tool in your life. And then like life progressed a little bit, like the internet started to become a thing. And how many people remember this right here? MapQuest, right? Come on. You like go, you, this was game changer right here. You go on the internets, you plug in your starting address, you put in your destination address, and you, the internets cranks out this beautiful instruction of how far you're gonna need to go and before you make this turn and that turn and step by step. And if you were on a very long trip, you could have two or three pages of instructions on where you're supposed to go. Anybody remember the MapQuest days right here? Talk about dangerous, right? We're like having papers we're trying to read or someone in the passenger seat is reading them off to you. Um, but that was like another level of then we started to kind of get this instructions turn by turn by turn. And it was something maybe we start to use a little bit more frequently. It kind of becomes a little more part of our life. You can see the progression here is now today we can plug in any address. And oftentimes people are super dependent on this, even in this town they live in. You might live right, you know, like you're going to the store, but your habit is just to plug it in everywhere you go. You might be a little what they call directionally challenged. And, and you're, you just depend on this and this is your crutch. And every day you can listen to those instructions from the, the person in your car giving you the navigation and telling you how many feet before you turn, how far you need to go, and then get to turn here. But how many know we still kind of mess that up sometimes, you know? I, every, every now and again, we'll be like, I, I blame the, the GPS. It's like, it told me too late. Like, I couldn't make the turn in time. But I, I really see this, this progression that we've gone on, this progression that we, could, we see with even navigation is how sometimes we approach the Word of God. Sometimes it's just kind of like, it's like the atlas that we have in our house or in our nightstand or in our, on our bookshelf at home. And occasionally when we feel like we need it, we might reference it or I need to look up a scripture, or, I need to find something. And, you know, there's kind of moments in our year, our life that we, we need to crack it open and get some direction in our life. And then we kind of see that, I also see it can, if we start to apply it a little bit more, it can almost be like the map quest, like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going on a trip or I'm going somewhere a little bit outside of where I know and I'm going to get the instructions and we start to apply it a little bit more to our life. But I think the beauty of living in the advantage of God's word is really applying it like we use navigation today and turn by turn instructions that daily we can depend on God to give us a word that we can depend on God to grow us. And we're not always trying to just use God's word to navigate this challenge or decision in our life, but that God is using his word to grow us and help us and encourage us or speak something about his character and truth in our life that we can apply. But every day we can utilize it. And I think how we view the Bible a lot of times informs really kind of the value we put on it. And I see that in our culture that there's a lot of different levels of how we value God's word. There's a lot of people out there that I think, number one, might just say, hey, the Bible, it's a good book. There's good things in it. There's historical accounts. There's things in it. And, but that's it. It's just a good book. It's just written by men. And, and, you know, it has 
has some things that are helpful, but there's not really a power in it. There's not really anything. And, and what they're doing is denying the power of God's word and the power of God's word spoken to man and what Paul talks about in Revelation 3 as the full revelation of God. There are also those that say, hey, well, the Bible is a mix of truth. It's a mix of errors, and there's things that have gone wrong and uh, things that have been put out there, and, and they really kind of talk about it as it's more the opinions of man. And what happens is then those people, they can use their scholarliness to shift the Bible whichever way that they want to go. They can use reasoning and logic and scholar, their scholarly explanations to kind of shift it whichever way they want it to make and apply it to their life. But it, the way that we see the Word of God is that it's the inspired Word of God. You see, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. So I want you to know this. At Highmark, we believe in the whole Word of God. Every word is true and applicable to our lives. It's an advantage that God's given to us. And, and we're not strong enough to live this life without the Word of God, this full revelation that he's given to us uh, to unfold in our life. We need that. And we can stand on this as a, as a rock and as his truth. And so what happened is that God spoke through men, and even though they have their own style of writing, that God inspired the things that they would say in that book for a purpose that is applicable to our daily life. And it could be turn-by-turn -turn navigation. The second advantage I see is not only that we have God's word, but is that in the scripture we hear that God is faithful, and God's faithfulness is an advantage. It's advantage for all of us. You see, God, uh, grace, uh, God's grace is that he's bringing us into his perfecting power, and we're being kind of washed through his perfecting power. The beauty of the gospel is not that we have to make ourselves right and we have to come to Jesus, but it's that God's grace is we just have to surrender ourselves and open ourselves up and that God is going to work on our life. He's going to do something in us. And he's faithful to us even when we're not faithful to him. And the reality is the world is still full of sin. Our lives can still be full of sin. But it's something that God has got us on a journey and he's taken us through. The world's full of sin. You know how I know? Because last week I was running an errand in the store and I spotted a great parking spot. And I discovered that the world is still full of sin. And I saw this great parking spot and I went to pull in. And I realized that the car on one side of it was parked over the line. I thought the sins of man are causing my life, causing me to stumble today. You might have been in the moment like that. You see, you might have started to pull in the spot. You realize that someone's over and you're like, oh, I cannot fit in there. I thought I had this great parking spot. And then you realize there's probably been 10 other people that saw that parking spot. And they, they rolled up there and thought they were blessed and highly favored as well. And they went to pull in and then they saw the sins of all mankind displayed right there and drove over the line. And, and they too had to pass on that spot. Or maybe like, you know, you know, I don't know what happened, but that over the line parker, they better have had an emergency in their life that caused them to park and leave their car that way before going into the store. But, you know, I've also been in the place in the parking lot where I've realized the sin of people because you're, you're going down the aisle and there's maybe a car in front of you and you see that spot up ahead and, and, they, and they roll right past it and you're like, bingo, I'm, that spot is mine. Only to have them throw the reverse uh, lights on and they just start to back into that spot. How extra is that? Come on. <laughs> Listen, all joking aside, like, you know, just park the normal way, people. Let's make space for everyone, you know. But it gives us a false hope. But jo all joking aside, listen, the world is not perfect. There's still sin in the world. There's still sin in our own life. But it's a condition that we can deal with and that God deals with in our life. And I love how Romans reminds us just a few verse later, verses later in what we, we were reading this morning 
Paul writes, he says, as the scriptures say, no one is righteous, not even one. No one is truly wise. No one is seeking God. All have turned away. All have become useless. No one does good, not a single one. But then he turns and he says, but God's grace meets us right there. Paul, Paul later in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, he's accounting the fact that he's asked God to remove his weakness in life. He's asked God to help him. And he, he recounts what God spoke to him and what God tells him. He says God tells him each time that my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. So the Apostle Paul is reminding us that grace is all we need. That God's faithfulness in our life is an advantage that we can live in. That we can live in our weakness, and our weakness actually is what makes us strong. Let me speak to the dads for a minute. When you're following Christ, and you're leading a household, you're leading your kids, maybe just your wife, God has called you to lead in a way that's authentic, that your kids and your family and those closest to you can see the challenges and your weaknesses. They can see you acknowledge them and also submit them to God. And that is a powerful picture of God's work in your life. And you know what? That's contrary to what this world tells us to do and how the world tells guys they got to behave. It's like, no, don't acknowledge that stuff. Bury it. Just be tough. Like, you know, gloss over it. You know, just don't ignore it. You know, don't deal with it. But the, but the reality is that a life submitted to God is, is always going to yield to his grace and, and realize what the Apostle Paul is saying here, that even in our weakness, that God's grace is all that we need. And I'm thankful for that. And you know what? This morning, God's grace is all that any of us need. And if you've never had the chance to accept God's grace, when I close in a minute in prayer, I'm going to pray for all of us. We're going to worship again one more time as we close this morning. But I want to pray, if you've never made that decision, that right now God would be speaking to you and you'll have the chance to respond and just pray a simple prayer as we pray, accepting that grace, accepting the advantage that God has given to you. God wants us to realize that even when we're not faithful, even in the face of our sin and our weakness, he is faithful every step of the way. He's not abandoning you. He's not letting you, letting you go, but he's still working all things to the good in your life. And you know what? The bottom line I want you to get this morning is that every advantage gives me a heavenly anointing. So when I talk about at the beginning, us walking and operating in an anointing. Well, we're going to live in it when we live in the advantages that God's given us of his grace, his faithfulness. We live in his word. We're going to walk with a different level of anointing in our life. And my prayer is that Highmark Church, we are a people that walk in this anointing of God. Like people don't even understand it around us. Like there's just something different about us. There's something different about the presence we carry to people in our world. And it's not just because, you know, like of our good nature and our kindness, but it's the grace of God and the power of God flowing through us. Now we're living in a heavenly anointing that causes us to live with a different level of awareness of God's goodness. It helps us to live in a, another level of God's strength. It helps us to live with a, another level of conviction and boldness to speak his truth to the, word, to the world and the people around us. So when I see a church, I see a church that is called to walk in a daily anointing. We're men and women who start our day seeking God's anointing. We walk the halls of our schools with a holy anointing. We lead our families with an anointing. We step into business deals with an anointing. And we bring an anointing into every conversation with our neighbors and our friends and our coworkers and our family. God has put people in our life that we can operate and we can live with a different power. 
we can walk with this advantage in life. That despite what all is going on around us, that we can live in his truth and his power and his grace and walk in this anointing. I want to pray for you this morning that God will help you walk in that level of anointing. Would you bow your heads this morning?